Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking a seriously over the top beautiful postcard perfect day here in the end times. On the it bugs in a jar on this spectacularly gorgeous. It is a Sunday morning halfway through September 2024. It is September 15th, 2024 as this uh, outlandishly gorgeous weather marches on through the month. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> I was going to do this, you know, my normal Saturday night wine last night, but uh by the time I ended up back in Doomsday Camper by myself in that trashed out old camper, I somehow did not have the energy for it. So, uh, <laughs> last night might have been the first time that this has ever happened that the vacation rental business where I had all three tiny houses booked. I was full up on Saturday night, <coughs> and in every house there was one person. There is a solo, single traveler in, uh, in every one of these tiny houses. Well, the woman here at Blue Dragon, where I am now, she had a dog. She did have her dog. And these uh, other two people traveling completely solo. And I don't know if that's ever happened. I, I think it has, you know, a after Labor Day, uh, after summer is officially over, uh, I think the, the loners come back out uh, after all of the families have gone home and the parties and all of that that the lone travelers show up and just thinking back on all of the goddamn years uh, that I spent traveling alone and I am just uh, would like to think I'm done with that. Uh, traveling alone can be one of the most brutal experiences a a person can deal with. Uh, some people act like they enjoy it. Uh, for someone who did it for so many years, let me tell you. So anyway, uh, what I ended up doing I spent about five hours last night on YouTube uh, <clears throat> on this theme. You know, it's one week from today I officially become an old man, a, a, a bitter old man with broken teeth, stranded without love here in the middle of nowhere. I have one week of middle age left to... Uh, to find my soulmate partner in life and then uh, apparently starting one week from today if my friend is correct and I'm not arguing with her I will have a better chance of getting hit by lightning than I will have in getting in a relationship with a woman again until the day I die and uh, <laughs> just, just, just trying to wrap my head around this so I spent five hours last night on YouTube sampling all of these different documentaries on loneliness and depression and then the couple being a hermit uh, of course a couple on suicide Five hours filling my brain with uh, how completely fucked uh, I am and millions and millions of other people. And uh, 
Good Lord. Uh, you know, for, for a subject that nobody wants to hear about or talk about, uh, this is one of the, uh, the, the recurring themes is uh, about how nobody wants to hear people whining uh, uh, about how lonely they are. I noticed a lot of these videos had millions of views, so I'm guessing uh, the only people who were listening to all of these videos on loneliness uh, were people sitting alone uh, with their thumb up their ass on a Saturday night like I was doing. Uh, so... But you know, some, so, so some of the takeaways I got, it was uh, one thing that I, that I was a little bit surprised about was, you know, I, I was mainly uh, just thinking that loneliness uh, was only something that uh, old farts you know, as officially 65 and older people dealt with. And while that is a huge percentage and what am I mostly centered on last night, the first video that I checked in when was this drop dead gorgeous 30 year old little hottie with a very successful job, you know, plenty of money. She's beautiful, intelligent, uh, blah, blah, blah. And uh, sitting there, you know, looking at the camera. I know this sounds crazy, uh, but I cannot make a connection with, with, with another human being on this planet. Then they're and then I looked at this this 18 year old girl, this this cute 18 year old girl, uh, who would have uh, no problem uh, finding a boyfriend and and, and whatnot, uh, you know, making the same claim, and you know more and more studies coming out that it's that the, the, the two groups who are now the loneliness are, uh, no shit Sherlock, the, uh, the officially old farts, you know, the 65 and olders, we still are the reigning kings and queens of loneliness, but it sounds like the next l largest group of, uh, of, or, or, uh, of lonely hearts or those under the age of 30 is uh, that a just a rising tide of, uh, of young people, uh, teenagers and 20-somethings, uh, which they're blaming, you know, one of the major theories on that is social media that uh, social, these little imaginary friends that you make, uh, you know, on YouTube or wherever, uh, have just completely supplanted human-to-human -human interaction. Uh, and, and, and that these kids, you know, who were raised in social media, they, they just don't know how to relate to uh, other humans, even if they, if they meet other humans. You know, we've all seen the, well, we've all seen it in real life where you'll go, you'll see a table full of, of young people uh, sitting at the same table and at least half of them are, are on their phones on social media when they're sitting two feet away from a live human being. But, uh, I mean, that's just, uh, I was looking at that mostly just, just as trying to understand the future of this planet, looking at the generation uh, taking over. And then uh, one recurring theme that, that I found and that I was a little bit surprised to hear is the number of married people 
number of married people that, uh, you, you know, every night uh, go to bed uh, next to uh, next to another human, wake up w with that human, assumedly might have breakfast and dinner with them, that uh, the, the number of married people uh, whining about being lonely. And, and, and then, uh, I, I guess on one level, one of my favorite groups of people were parents that... Um, I mean, I, I, I'm talking parents uh, of small children. Then there was one, I guess this fellow was in his 40s, who was the single father of two teenage boys. Uh, that, uh, that, that children, that they, that they have kids. Uh, good God, it's just like, you would you would see these people, their their in connections with other human beings, including by marriage and and blood relatives, and they're all claiming uh, that the the number one word that they define themselves by is the word lonely, and I'm thinking, what the fuck? Uh, now, of course, I was mostly interested in, you know, since I am heading into coming to terms with the fact that I am going to be alone uh, till the day I die. I, uh, so I was mainly looking at people uh, my age is the ones that, you know, that I was searching out on YouTube, and it's not hard to find at all uh, the number of YouTubers out, out here talking about this subject to their little imaginary friends on, uh, on YouTube. But one thing, I don't know why I was surprised, uh, but I was a little bit heartened by the fact uh, that these people... Uh, you know, once they get my age and all the kids are, have their new lives, that it seems to almost make no difference whether they have, uh, like, adult children in, in their lives and grandchildren, uh, that uh, it, it's unbelievable how... The, the adult children and, and the grandkids just have nothing to do with these uh, people's lives. You, you know, and, and interviewing these folks saying, you know, if, if I see my own, uh, my own son uh, who lives right across town twice a year, I would be surprised. So, uh any clueless moron uh, youngster thinking having children is, is going to save them uh, from being alone in their older years. Pull your head out of your ass. Uh, just do a YouTube search on lonely old people with children. Uh, just pretty much just be, you know, you're old and in the way. Your kids grow up. They get their own families. They don't want to be dealing uh, w with all of your old person shit. You're old and in the way. They're waiting around for you to die so uh, they can uh, get the inheritance. Uh, they want you dead. Uh, so at least I can solidify the fact that my decision to get a vasectomy and not have any fucking kids was was the uh, greatest uh, decision I ever made, hands down. You should have heard it. Uh, my young friends, when I was 22, uh, getting this vasectomy, hey, man, you're going to regret this. Uh, in your, you know, when you're old and blah, 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 you're not going to have any children and grandchildren. You're going to be so alone and lonely. Well, 
uh, that does not, uh, that, that, that one doesn't wash, uh, it's just like there, there, there's just no fucking, uh, there's, there's no way, and, and, you know, so many takeaways that you hear over and over again, and, and, and you know, people uh, laughing off, well, you know, you just need to choose, or you, you, you need to get out there and meet people, and, and all of this crap, these little platitudes and cliches uh, from people who have no fucking idea what uh what what people are talking about all of this crap you hear uh, the, the old pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of thing get out there and meet people please don't know whether to laugh puke or cry uh And then uh, one, one that I heard a couple of times, you know, what is your biggest fear? What is your biggest fear? A and how people just immediately said being alone. Uh, is there, you know, as one guy was saying this, this 72-year-old man, uh, who, who looked like he had everything going for him, uh, is, is being, uh, the, the, just realizing that I'm going to be alone until the day I die. It, it's a, it's a bigger fear than death. Uh, the, the fear of loneliness, uh, living a life alone is, is is a bigger fear than actually dying uh, which I'll, I'll get to uh, in, in a minute um, and of course uh, one of the as I've had rants before and, and it's certainly, uh, over the next few days, d d d just the going to be driven into my head, and there's a pretty good chance you're going to figure this out yourself if you haven't already. Talking to folks about uh, and, and folks talking about uh. The, that moment, that epiphany, when they figured out that they were going to be alone the rest of their life, that, they're, that they, they can almost re remember the moment uh, in their lives when they understood that this is it, this is it. Uh, this is going to be my situation uh, uh, until the day I die. And, uh, of course, I talked about this, you know, when I did my, uh, when I did that mushroom trip to get goddamn Dulcinea out of my fucking brain uh, once and for all, uh, you know, in, in February when I enlisted the mushroom god to get that crazy woman out of my life uh, is when I realized that once that ridiculous fantasy was obliterated out of my, my mind, my brain, and my heart, uh, that she was my last ridiculous, uh, you know, little sliver of hope uh, that that I was going to, uh, you know, meet my quote soulmate and all of this shit, and so I, I finally got rid of her. But once uh, once Dulcinea 
uh, got drummed out by the mushroom god is when uh, I, I was 99.9% .9 of the way there. And so that was six months ago. And I said, o okay, Hambun. Uh, I, I remember telling myself uh, when, you know, when that happened, uh, that you have six months, six months to, uh, to find your soulmate, your doomer chick forever, uh, and, and, and once you hit 65, that will be the, uh, the, you know, that is the final deadline. So I have seven days, seven days for the, uh, for the universe to deliver my soulmate out here in the middle of fucking nowhere. Uh, that she's going to come waltzing in. Out here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, my doomer chick forever. But yeah, it's that, uh... It's when you... When you understand on a cellular level that you are never going to, uh... You know, be sharing your life with another person. <coughs> so of course, uh, you know the old standard: get a dog. That uh, you know, several interviews with 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 people saying, "No shit, Sherlock, uh, get a fucking dog." But then, of course, dogs die. You know, they live 10, 15 years, and they're dead. And then you got to deal with that. Sancho gave me a dirty look when I said that. And you know, he's 10 years old now. So now I've, uh, I, 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 I get to face dealing with Sancho getting old and dying. Uh, you, you know, with no support. Uh, and then I'll be sitting here with a dead dog. Alone with my thumb up my ass. And, and of course, you know, with all these interviews, uh, I, I probably touched in with 30, if not more, uh, people talking about this on YouTube, this, this very subject, but as far as I could tell, not one of them was a doomer. They, they didn't have the overarching umbrella of, of being a doomer about, uh, I mean, all they were looking at is how they were personally fucked. I mean, well, that's what they were talking about. I mean, they were, it was, that they were whining, not ranting. Uh, and, but, but as far as I could, they, 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 none of them mentioned being a doomer. You know what I'm saying. So, uh, I don't have any reason to think that one of those people... Uh, you know, talking about being alone till the day they die, uh, also had to be dealing with the fact that uh, this planet is fucked. I mean, m m m m maybe uh, one or two of them uh, is not a clueless moron, so... Uh, but I, I see no reason to believe that anyone I saw interviewed has ever given the state of this planet a, uh, a moment's consideration. It's probably never crossed their mind. 
Oh, Jesus. Uh, there is no way. I, and then, then, of course, I uh, went in and about, about the internet dating. Uh, you know, this, this one uh, talking about people's uh, absolute failure in this whole internet dating scene uh, about how the, you know, the internet dating scene is, it, it, it's every bit as tragic as anything that, uh, that Shakespeare ever wrote. Uh, I, I like how this one woman defined it. She goes, okay, she goes, I, I, I'm sitting here on a planet of 8 billion people, so there's 4 billion men uh, available out there, and, and so uh, I can't find one in real life, so I'm being, uh, so, I mean, she, she was funny, she goes, so I'm being rejected uh, by four billion men in real life, so I go up there on the internet. Uh, go up there on internet dating, so I, what I can get uh, rejected uh, by any man who hasn't already rejected me uh, in, in real life. And this woman was 38 years old, 38 years old, uh, and just, just, you know, talking about just the absolute bleakness of uh, just swallowing all of your pride and going out there on internet dating. But then, of course, uh, I know, including my own brother, met a woman, you know, through a newspaper ad, but even before then, 1992, 1992 met his lifetime partner uh probably somebody listening to this uh met uh met his life partner uh on the internet a a good buddy of mine in texas uh he met his uh soulmate uh on the internet so it it, it works it works probably for one one hundredth of one percent uh that this whole internet dating industry good fucking god that uh if, if there's any way uh for a lonely heart to get more depressed than they already are is go on that fucking thing Sancho, what are you doing? Sancho! I don't know what my dog is after. Little dog, now! Sancho! Good God. Sancho! I want to go find my dog. I just wanted to touch base on two more things before I wrap up this wine since I realize I'm talking to myself and I have to go get my dog. Uh, then, of course, I had to touch base with a couple of uh, YouTubes on hermits and uh, listening to people who act like uh, they are 100% happy uh, completely turning their back on the human race. That, uh, Sancho! That they absolutely love uh, living out in the middle of fucking nowhere, uh, never having to deal with anybody else's bullshit. And, and on one level, I, 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 I can understand that. Uh... But then finally, the very last uh, one I watched, and I watched every minute of it, it's a 30-minute video by this woman who's living in her van. And she did this uh, video called What It's Like to Live When You Don't Want to. What It's Like to Live When You Don't Want to. Uh, where this woman tried to explain 
the feeling uh, of, of what it's like to go through your life where your biggest wish in life is that you go to fucking sleep and don't wake up. Trying to put this into words who pe to people who don't live every day of their life alone and depressed uh, and uh, trying to verbalize, to articulate what it means. And she's saying this not necessarily, it doesn't mean necessarily that you're suicidal. It's, uh, it's just what it feels like to go through your life every morning waking up going, God damn it, here I am again. I uh, got to get through another one of these goddamn things until I go to sleep again tonight. And she spent 30 minutes doing that. So uh, I highly advise she did a pretty good job. So uh, anybody with me, I'm going to post the, uh, the link to that video, what it's like to live when you don't want to. And uh, for anybody who does or does not understand what it feels like to live when you don't want to, uh, give this woman living alone in her van a chance to explain it to you but right now I need to go find my soulmate who just went charging off after something in the woods bye guys